What is line breeding and how do you use it to make geckos like these? What is going on guys? In this video, we are going to talk about line breeding. I want to help you understand everything you need to know about line breeding so that you can apply this knowledge to your future breeding projects. Okay, my friends, here is an illustration that is going to help us understand line breeding. Now, in case you haven't seen our genetic series, I have four videos that will tell you everything about the basics of genetics. I will leave a link to that series in the top right corner of your screen here so that you can watch that first or later if you would like. So just as a recap, whenever a baby is made, whether it's human or whether it's animal, that baby inherits DNA or information from both parents. That information is expressed in what's called a double helix. This wavy strand-like ladder is called a double helix. It represents your mom's DNA. So let's say this yellow is your mom's DNA that was passed on to you. And let's say this purplish blue is your dad's DNA that was passed on to you. This also works the same with animals. Now, if you didn't notice, this DNA does look a lot like a ladder and it has these little ladder steps or rungs. The significance of these rungs is at each one of these ladder steps is a different piece of information from your mom and from your dad. Same with the animals. Each of those ladder step locations are called locus points. Location, locus point, kind of matches there. So to understand line breeding, or another name for line breeding is polygenic inheritance, First, we're going to do a brief recap on Mendelian inheritance. Mendelian inheritance means that you inherited a specific feature about your appearance from your mom or from your dad at one specific locus point. So let's take this locus point right here. Where this circle is, this purple is your dad's DNA. This yellow is your mom's DNA. And as you see, they are fused together through the process of creating you. Same with animals. Mendelian inheritance means that different features that you possess are inherited at one specific locus point. In human beings, Mendelian genetics is actually expressed very little compared to plant or animal genetics. Here are a couple examples of Mendelian genetics that exist in human beings. Earlobes. Whether your earlobe is attached to your face or whether it is free hanging like mine, that is considered a Mendelian inheritance. Dimples are considered a Mendelian inheritance and a cleft chin or the butt chin is considered a Mendelian inheritance. That means both the earlobes, the dimples, and the cleft chin, they're each located at one specific locus point on your specific strand of DNA. So from this purple strand, your dad passes on information at this specific spot, just this one spot regarding your earlobes. Your mom does the same thing, and then based on what they pass on, you wind up having free earlobes or you wind up having attached earlobes. So that's at this specific locus point. Let's take dimples. Remember, each one of these ladder steps are different physical features, maybe even mental or maybe even psychological features that you inherit from both your dad and your mom. So let's take this locus point right here. Let's say this is the one for dimples. That means since this yellow side is curving around, your mom passes on dimple information from the purple side, your dad passes on dimple information, and then you wind up having dimples or not based on the information that is passed on into your DNA. So you have to remember your DNA is a fusing of the traits that your parents have passed on to you. 
And just so that you can understand the point, cleft chin, again, is at another locus point. So let's say it's right here. Since this is purple, your dad passes on cleft chin information. And from the yellow side, your mom passes on cleft chin information. Those two strands of DNA wind up meeting to create the specific inheritance that you visually display right now. So those are Mendelian genetics. Mendelian genetics, again, in recap, are genetics that are passed on at one locus point. They're actually referred to as simple genetics as well. Humans don't have very Mendelian genetic traits. Animals and plants, on the other hand, have many Mendelian traits, but some line bred traits, as we are going to discover here. So now let's take a look at polygenic, right? The reason you're here, line breeding. What is line breeding? Well, unlike Mendelian genetics, where one locus point influences a certain trait or physical feature that you inherit, in line breeding or polygenic breeding, certain physical features or traits are inherited by many different locus points or in this case, many different ladder rungs or ladder steps. So let's take a couple examples here. In human beings, height is polygenic, hair is polygenic, skin is polygenic, and even eye color is polygenic. So what does that mean? Let's show you an example. Remember, each one of these ladder steps are different locus points. In Mendelian genetics, at each one of those different locus points, contains a physical feature or trait that is going to change or not change something in your appearance based on what your parents pass on. But in polygenic or line breeding inheritance, multiple ladder rungs are coming together to influence a certain desired look. So let's take human height, for example. Human height might be a combination of this ladder rung combined with this ladder rung, combined with this one and this one. And remember, each ladder rung is just different bits of information that your parents are passing on to you from their genetic strand. Here's your dad's genetic strand, and here's your mom's genetic strand. So purple is dad, yellow is mom. Dad and mom pass you on information at each one of those ladder rungs. So based on the height of your dad and based on the height of your mom, information will be passed on on this ladder rung, this ladder rung, this ladder rung, and this ladder rung. It could be a huge amount of ladder rungs or it could be a small amount of ladder rungs, but as long as it's more than one, poly, meaning more than one, genetic, which is the inheritance type that you are receiving from certain traits. Hair color is the same way. Skin and eye color is the same way. So let's take one more example. If you have brown eyes, blue eyes, green eyes, amber eyes, hazel eyes, all of those different variances of color come from multiple ladder rungs that were passed on from each of your parents to give you a specific eye color that's in your eye right now. So let's say amber is located here, 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 and here. And based on the information that your dad passes on, and based on the information that your mom passes on, you are either going to have amber color eyes, hazel color eyes, green color eyes, blue color eyes, or somewhere in between. So I hope that makes sense with polygenetic, meaning multiple genes that are interacting to give you one specific look. Hair color is one specific look, or lack of hair color right now. Height is a specific look. Skin color is a specific look. And eye color is a specific look. So you would think that, okay, because it's a specific look, it was only passed on by one gene in my DNA. But the answer is no. Height, hair, skin, and eye color are polygenic traits in human beings, meaning that multiple genes combine to give you the eye color you have, to give you the skin color you have, to give you the height that you have and the hair color that you have. Okay, so how does this relate to leopard geckos? Well, let's take a couple examples of Mendelian traits in leopard geckos versus polygenic traits or line bred traits in leopard geckos. 
First, starting with Mendelian, everybody loves and knows what the snow genetic is. It makes the gecko lighter, and when you have two copies of them, it actually transforms the gecko to look completely different and give it a really cool black and white spotted contrast. Because snow is considered a simple or Mendelian genetic, it would be located at one specific locus point. Or remember, another word for locus point is ladder step or ladder rung. Each ladder step or ladder rung contains information that was passed on from your dad's DNA and your mom's DNA to create your specific look and your specific DNA. So let's say the snow is located at this specific locus point right here. The dad gecko in purple will pass on something related or not related to the snow gene and the mom in yellow will pass on something related or not related to the snow gene therefore giving the baby gecko at one specific point of inheritance either a snow look or a non-snow look or a super snow look since it can inherit one copy of the snow gene from each parent and that's called the complete dominant form of the incomplete form when it has both copies and therefore has a physical feature that is different than if it only had one copy. So very unique, the snow gene, it's an incomplete dominant gene. Again, I'll leave another link to my genetic series right here in the top right corner. If you have not watched that series, we cover everything to do with Mendelian genetics. So you'll need to know about dominance, recessive, incomplete dominance, co-dominance, and I will go over in more detail about the double helix, alleles, and genes so that you can better understand genetics when you are making your preparations for your breeding projects and the future. All right, let's move on to another one. White and yellow is also a dominant trait and therefore it is Mendelian and therefore it is expressed at one specific locus point. So let's say this is the specific locus point for the white and yellow gene. Your mom right here will pass on information regarding the white and yellow or not regarding the white and yellow depending on what she has and your dad will do the same and based on what your mom passes on and based on what your dad passes on the little baby leopard gecko will either be white and yellow or not white and yellow let's take eclipse eclipse is also mendelian but if you haven't noticed each one of these mendelian traits take place at a separate ladder rung at a separate location on your specific dna so the eclipse gene might be located over here. Your dad passes on information regarding the eclipse or not regarding the eclipse, and your mom passes on information containing the eclipse or not containing the eclipse. Therefore, that little leopard gecko baby will either be eclipse or not eclipse based on the information that the parents pass on. And one last one, albino. Let's say the albino location is located here, and therefore the baby can either be albino or not albino based on the information the parents pass on. Each one of these Mendelian inherited traits are at different locus points, which means you can have different combinations of Mendelian traits depending on what the parents pass on. For example, the baby can contain the snow gene and the white and yellow gene, but not the eclipse or albino. Or it could contain the eclipse gene and the albino gene but not contain the snow gene or the white and yellow gene. And another option, it can actually contain all four genetics and it can contain the snow gene, the white and yellow gene, the eclipse gene, and the albino gene. And therefore would be expressing four different traits combined in one gecko to give it a certain look or appearance. Okay, so how does this relate to line breeding or polygenic breeding? Certain traits are inherited through non-Mendelian ways in leopard geckos. Those traits are tangerine leopard geckos, black knight leopard geckos, and bold stripe leopard geckos. There's other line bred traits in leopard geckos, but these are some of the top three that people will know about, and so it will be easiest for me to reference these three. So taking our same human example of polygenic breeding, let's say height is located at this specific locus point, this one, this one, and this one. Remember, poly meaning more than one, and genetic meaning what you are inheriting, you're inheriting more than one location that is affecting your height, that is affecting your hair color, skin color, eye color. 
Well, it's the same with leopard geckos base color. So let's say the leopard geckos base color is yellow. How do you get an orange leopard gecko? At some point in the evolution history of the leopard gecko, certain leopard geckos started expressing more features of orange coloration. Nothing like what we have today, but a little bit of orange coloration. So breeders began taking that little bit of orange coloration and combining it with other geckos that had a little bit of orange coloration to create babies that had even more orange coloration and so on and so forth. Every single year, they kept breeding the babies that were most and most orange until we came up with the very orange geckos that we have today. This is possible because of polygenetic breeding or selectively line breeding certain traits or characteristics in geckos. So again, the tangerine gene is not located at one specific locus point in the gecko's DNA. It's a combination of multiple genes in each parent's DNA to give that baby a certain orange look. Now it's the same with the black knight. How was the black knight genetic made? Well, it took about 11 to 12 years from a guy in the Netherlands who had a competition with his friend to see who could make the darkest leopard gecko. Well, his friend wound up giving up on the project, but this guy continued with the project to what we have today, which is the black knight leopard gecko. So he took leopard geckos that were exhibiting darker traits and bred them to other leopard geckos that were exhibiting darker traits. And little by little, over 11 to 12 years after repeating that process, he has what we now have and what we know as the black knight leopard gecko, an all black leopard gecko. But the black genetics or the dark pigmented color genetics inside of the gecko's DNA did not derive from one locus point. It derived from this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, all in combination to give the gecko an overall darker appearance. And then it's up to the breeder to selectively hold back the geckos that are most orange or most black to create more geckos that are all orange or all black. And lastly, the same with the bold stripe. Bold stripe was created from geckos that originally started to display a little bit of striping, a little bit of pattern organization. And by repeating that same process of breeding a gecko that has stripe-ish pattern to another gecko that has stripe-ish pattern, over the years we've created some very strong genetic animals that have some very clear striping going on in their physical appearance. And that is all because of line breeding. Bold stripe is not located at one locus point in the gecko's DNA. It's a combination of, let's say, this ladder rung combining with this ladder rung and this ladder rung and this ladder rung to give the gecko that striping effect. Now, here's the really, really cool thing about polygenic breeding. In Mendelian genetics, because the inheritance is located at one specific locus point, the animal either has or doesn't have that specific feature that you are looking for, such as snow, white, and yellow eclipse or albino. It either has it or it doesn't have it, plain as day. But with polygenic breeding, because it's a combination of multiple ladder rungs or multiple locations in the parent's DNA, even if you take one parent that is completely normal and breed it to a polygenic parent, the offspring are going to contain half or some of the polygenic traits that one of the gecko parents have. Let me explain. Let's say you take a really, really orange leopard gecko, tangerine, and you breed it to a yellow leopard gecko, no tangerine at all. What do you think those babies are gonna come out as? Well, according to Mendelian genetics, it would either be yellow or orange. It's black and white. It either has it or it doesn't have it. But with polygenetic inheritance, because the inheritance is located at multiple points, the babies can actually express a lot, a little, or somewhere in between of the genetics of whichever parent had the polygenetic trait. So when you take a leopard gecko that's really, really orange, let's say dad is really, really orange and mom is just a yellow. When that dad splits off his DNA into the little baby clutches of leopard geckos, 
those leopard geckos are going to inherit varying levels of genetics from the dad. If the tangerine color is a combination of one, two, three, four locations in the dad's DNA, what if at three of those locations, one, two, three, the dad's orange genetics dominate that locust point, and at one location, the mom's yellow genetics dominate that locust point, then now the baby has more orange genetics contained in his DNA than yellow genetics. Or the opposite can happen. When the dad's DNA splits and the mom's DNA splits, the mom could actually dominate through one, two, three locations, could be dominated by yellow color, and one location could be affecting introducing some orange color. And now you'll have a leopard gecko that is mainly yellow with a little bit of orange. Or it can be split. Let's say at two of the locations, the mom's DNA dominates and it's yellow. And at the other two locations, the dad's DNA dominates and it's orange. Now the gecko will be a blend or a combination of yellow and orange traits. So whenever you're considering line breeding, that's why you want to take a parent that has the same genetics as the other parent to produce babies that continue on that level of saturation of those genes. Because if the dad is orange and the mom is orange, then at each one of those locus points where the orange color genetics are located for the gecko's DNA, it's going to receive orange from the dad and it's going to receive orange from the mom.